So I switched to the iPhone 15 Plus for around two weeks and this is what I found out. So I was actually using this titanium model first, um, but then, you know, I had some issue with my eSIM. So for the time being, I switched over to this matte black 15 Plus, which is also my current, you know, plus iPhone. And I actually haven't desired going back. And I know it's kind of weird to say that as somebody who does tech videos, but there's been a couple of reasons why. And I mean, the first one is I prefer this matte black color to almost any iPhone that came out this year. I don't know what it is about the 15 plus and matte black. It's just so sexy looking. It's a really good looking phone. The device is just clean on the back, on the edges. It kind of reminds me of the matte black 7 plus. That was one of my favorite looking iPhones of all time. I think I had it for a little while. Much better than the jet black that the 7 plus employed, but just a beautiful matte black edition here of the 15 plus. I absolutely, I think this is a stunning looking iPhone right here. Um, so that was the very first reason was simply the color. The next one, I didn't even think I would consider this because I thought they were around the same, but there's actually more weight to the 15 Pro Max. And while it's very small, that extra, you know, lightness of the 15 plus makes this so much more comfortable. And even if it's only like a few grams it's definitely it just feels better to hold this is even more comfortable than the already improved comfort of the 15 pro max so i just think that for a large iphone this is the most comfortable one they've ever made in terms of a larger uh, iphone at least at the 6.7 inch size so smooth at the edges very lightweight it's just if you want a big iphone that's easy to carry and manage day to day with the weight the 15 plus is the move man Another weird thing that I didn't think I would um, like about this, but, and at first I really, really noticed it, but I, I swear to you guys, like I literally am, am starting to forget about the fact this has 60 Hertz. You really don't even notice um, that this has 60 Hertz after a few days. I, I totally forgot. And the reason I forgot is because iOS, even on 60 Hertz is super smooth. It's super consistent. So it kind of just feels like it performs great all the time. So you don't even... You don't even notice it. And I was like looking to see, did this one actually get smoother? Because at first, my eyes were really noticing this is 60 hertz. This is really choppy looking by comparison. But actually, the only time I really see it now is if I bring out my 15 Pro Max and I start comparing them side by side, I tend to see it now. Um, but I don't see it. Um, it this goes over my head um, when I'm not even using any 90 hertz or, or 120 hertz. So I'm not giving Apple credit for this. I still think they should bring 90 hertz or 120 hertz just because the competition has it. But I honestly forgot about it. And I'm just being totally real with you. Even as somebody who uses other phones that has it, I still forgot about it when using this. I still forgot about it when using this. It was really a strange phenomenon. I didn't even really think my psychology would let me forget about it, but I kind of did. Another thing I learned is that um, the camera is enough. I, I didn't really need more. The only time I was wishing I had more was pretty much when I was going to do something like more pro level. Like if I was going to do a video, put the phone on the tripod. But even then, I'm using a phone that has a bigger sensor or a camera that actually, actually has proper bigger sensor, proper lens. So I didn't really even crave having more camera. And the video quality is about the same, so I didn't feel like when I was out with this phone that I was missing much from this phone. And again, uh, clearly the 15 Pro Max is the better option, but it's definitely um, something you got to really think about. Do you really need that? Because I would argue most people don't need it. This, this to me is more of a flex for a lot of people versus actually a usage case, like they're actually going to use it. Um, I'm talking about the majority. I'm not talking about us tech fans who actually take advantage of the pro raw. We actually use those triple cameras to their full extent because a day to day, you know, I was finding myself barely even touching more than two times zoom. So the cameras on the 15 plus to me are definitely enough. It's a sleeper phone in this area. It really is very, very good. Even though you would think, ah, oh, diagonal camera again, looks just like an iPhone 12 camera is a sleeper. It, it is definitely a beast, even though it looks smaller. Even the night mode is solid. Take a look at the Grinch who stole Christmas. I took this this uh, picture the other day. It's fantastic imagery from the iPhone 15 Plus.
I also learned that the battery life in certain circumstances is better than the 15 Pro Max. Um, after switching over here to this as my main phone, um, my main iPhone, and that's a, a really pleasant su- surprise. And one of the main things that I really like about having a 60 hertz is really weird to say that because I don't really like 60 hertz, honestly, if I'm being totally honest. But I did find it weird that I forgot about it. But I also find it um, really great that I can turn on low power mode without that jarring effect where now I'm going to 60 hertz if I turn on low power mode for the 15 Pro Max. So I feel like I can enjoy this on low power mode a little bit more than this phone because then it switches down and then this looks like a 15 plus over here. So I don't really like using low power mode on the 15 Pro Max, but here I do. So that was able to equal me out even more battery life. But in um, certain scenarios, like when watching video, this actually lasts longer than the 15 Pro Max. So this thing is a battery beast right here, uh, even though it's slightly smaller capacity than the Max. The bezels on here are thicker, so, but they still didn't bother me because they're pretty much like the 14 Pro Max, which wasn't terrible. Um, I did really love that they have Dynamic Island here on the base model. It really makes this feel not so base to me anymore, just because they brought a feature that was exclusive to the Pro before. A couple other things, the performance is excellent. It, just because it has 60 hertz doesn't mean it's not excellent. It still has a blazing fast chip and everything on this phone runs fantastic and super smooth. Viewing angles are great with this OLED panel and the brightness and sharpness are identical to the 15 Pro Max. So it's basically a light version to me. I actually, it's so weird. Maybe it's just out of habit, but I actually kind of missed the silent switch just because the action button, I still am getting used to that. Still getting used to the fact that if I, have it on the camera, if I have the action button on the camera, but then I want it back on silent, I gotta go back and change it. So I kinda missed having the silent switch. It's just kind of a very easy button to use. So um, that was fun. That probably won't be here on the next model. So keep that in mind, but that's it for me. The 15 plus, I switched over for a couple of weeks and honestly, I'm probably gonna stay on it for a few more days. Uh, maybe to wrap up the year, I'm just I'm just enjoying the 15 plus for some reason. Um, I, I explained a lot of them here. Uh, if you have a 15 plus, let me know your thoughts down below. Um, do you enjoy it? Do you plan on getting one? And uh, let's chat about that. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to go ahead and do that. Also, you can subscribe to my main channel if you want to see more in-depth tech videos. This is my second channel where we discuss things that you don't usually cover on the main. So I'll catch you all the next one. Nick here. Uh, Be sure to be well and peace.